We want to help you with your phone privacy. In a world more connected than ever, our smartphones have become the ultimate tracking devices. They see our every movement, conversation, and click. They go with us everywhere we go, capture our memories, and often sit next to our bed as we sleep. But it is possible to better protect this data on our phones, and the operating system that you use makes a huge difference. Most people use phones powered by either iOS or Android, but Apple and Google gather a staggering amount of information from these operating systems. Telemetry data revealing our interactions with the device, precise location details. This data gives them a scary amount of insight into our lives. So if you're privacy conscious like me, you've probably switched to an alternative operating system that prioritizes privacy. I personally use Graphene OS. It's an open source, privacy focused mobile OS with enhanced security security features. It isolates apps to limit their invasiveness, and it offers clear settings for selectively disabling things like internet connectivity for specific services. It's a great choice for those who want to reclaim their digital privacy. We have a tutorial that explains how to install it on your device if you want to take the plunge. In this video, we're going to dive into more detail about what makes Graphene great for privacy. There'll be tips on how to get started, like what you need to know before you even buy your phone, and then we'll walk you through how to optimize your settings to really get the most from your new device. Just to be clear, whether you customize your settings or not, you're already doing a huge amount for your privacy just by making the switch to Graphene. So you should feel awesome about that. And if you haven't yet taken the plunge, this video will give you a glimpse of some of the cool features that await you when you do. So to understand how to make your digital footprint as small as possible, let's start with purchasing your device in the first place. Graphene OS is only compatible with Pixel devices, and this may seem like a contradiction for some people. How can I have a secure and private device if I'm using Google hardware? There are some great reasons why Graphene OS has chosen to focus on supporting Pixel devices. Pixels have many features that just aren't available on other phone models. First, they come with a robust hardware security infrastructure, such as the Titan M2 security chip and the Tensor security core. These are key hardware features for ensuring strong file encryption on your device and providing solid protection against unauthorized access if someone has the device in their physical possession. We'll explain more about this a little later. Second, Pixels allow you to run alternative operating systems with user-controlled signing keys whilst preserving all hardware security security features, such as AVB 2.0. It sounds super confusing, but essentially what this means is that with Pixels, users can replace or modify the operating system without breaking the device's ability to verify the integrity of the software at boot time. It is possible to install alternate operating systems on a variety of Android devices, but it's usually done in an insecure way or by crippling security features. Pixels are different in that they officially support this functionality and allow you to maintain the device's full security features when doing so. Google also provides long-term security support for Pixel devices, meaning regular security updates that last for many years, up to seven years on the Pixel 8. This is a longer support period than any other manufacturer of Android devices. And finally, one other cool feature the Pixel 8 added is hardware support for memory tagging. Memory tagging is a security feature that helps protect a system against certain types of memory memory corruption vulnerabilities, such as double free and use after free bugs. Again, it sounds confusing, but basically it's a feature that will drastically improve the security of your device against targeted attacks. And Graphene OS is taking full advantage of this feature. So if you decide to install Graphene OS, which Pixel device should you choose? Well, probably the latest model of Pixel within your budget constraints. Right now, the latest model is the Pixel 8. This will give you the longest support for security updates, which is important because you don't want to keep using hardware that's no longer getting security updates. Next, you'll be tempted to buy a phone that's cheaper because it's been tied to a carrier contract. Stop, there are super important things that you need to know about this first. If you're buying your device while signing a contract with a carrier, you'll likely be sold a carrier locked device. These are restricted to a specific cell network, binding the user to a carrier contract. But they're often not just 
just carrier locked. Sometimes they're what's called variant devices that are also bootloader locked. Carriers like Verizon are notorious for this. On their variant devices, the OEM unlock option has been disabled and there's nothing you can do to get it enabled again. OEM unlock is what allows you to unlock the bootloader so that you can install a custom operating system on the device. If this is grayed out, it means that you won't be able to install Graphene OS on your phone. The reason some carriers disable this option is to ensure that the software on the device remains unchanged and to enforce the terms of the contract or installment plans associated with the device. But the real problem with these variant devices is that if that phone was initially a carrier locked variant, it will stay a variant. And that OEM unlock feature still won't work even if the carrier contract has expired and even if it's been refurbished. So you have to be really careful what kind of device you purchase. Our tips. Don't purchase a phone in conjunction with a carrier plan. You must ensure that it's not a variant device and make sure that OEM unlock is enabled on it. Second, be careful of refurbished devices. You may not know whether it's actually a variant device that was originally locked into a phone carrier contract. So before purchasing a refurbished phone, make sure you ask the seller whether OEM unlock is grayed out or not. Final tip for purchasing a device, we recommend buying your Pixel in person from a physical store using cash. It's more private than purchasing online with a credit card in your name and a delivery to your home address. Next is cell service. If you want to be able to use your phone to make calls and access the internet anywhere you go, you'll need a SIM card. Ideally, you should purchase a prepaid SIM card with cash without tying it to your identity. In the US, in most states, this is very easy. But if you're somewhere else in the world, this may be more difficult. Michael Basil's book, Extreme Privacy for Mobile Devices, has some good solutions for international people. Personally, I prefer not to have a SIM in my phone at all. And in an upcoming video in our phone privacy series, I explain why and whether or not this is the right choice for most people. Now let's think about mobile accessories. A physical case is great just for protecting your device in general and to protect your privacy, I highly recommend a privacy screen. If you think the personal information on your phone is safe because it's locked with a passcode, it's not. Bad guys can look over your shoulder, memorize your passcode, and then snatch your phone. If you've ever sat in an auditorium or on a plane or next to someone in a queue, you'll know that you can see everything that person types on their phone, even from a long distance away. A privacy screen makes it far more difficult for someone to see what's on your phone and is essential for a privacy conscious person. Now let's dive into ways that you can optimize your phone settings once you have Graphene OS installed. While Graphene defaults are already really awesome, there are further steps that you can take to lock down your device even more. For example, you can make sure that your device doesn't connect with 2G networks. Under settings, go to network and internet. Select sims, select your sim, and scroll to the bottom where it says allow 2G. Toggle that off. Organizations like EFF have been sounding the alarm against the security and privacy problems of 2G for years. So let's talk about why this is an important setting to disable. First, 2G networks use a weak encryption standard that's easier to crack. Obviously, your cell provider can access your phone calls and messages regardless of which network you're using. But when you use 2G, your mobile phone calls and text messages can potentially be intercepted and decoded by third parties in between your your phone and the cell tower too. Also, in 2G, only the mobile device is authenticated by the network, but not vice versa. This makes it easier to set up rogue base stations known as IMSI catchers or stingrays that pretend to be legitimate cell towers. Devices then connect to these fake towers, allowing attackers to intercept and monitor communications. Even if you have more secure 3G or 4G networks available on your phone, attackers can force a device to downgrade and use the less secure 2G network and then intercept your communications. So you should disable 2G. Now let's look at airplane mode. It can be really helpful for privacy to put your phone into airplane mode whenever you're not using it. But be aware that you won't be able to receive calls through your regular cell network if you do this. The reason it's good for privacy is because your phone is constantly communicating with nearby cell towers. Cell providers are able to use this communication to monitor your real-time location and they actually have a long history 
history of selling this location data. Airplane mode is the only setting that stops your phone constantly pinging cell towers. It's worth noting that your phone is actually pinging cell towers whether you have a SIM in the phone or not, performing all kinds of functions. One of them is something called time sync, where phones connect to cell towers to retrieve accurate time data, synchronizing with the network's time. Network time can actually be disabled. Go to settings, system, date and time, and then unenable set time automatically. On AOSP or the stock OS of other Android devices, your phone will keep making these network connections even after disabling this setting. Your phone just stops setting time based on these connections. But when you unenable set time automatically on Graphene OS, your phone actually stops making these network time connections entirely. Putting your phone in airplane mode also stops your phone connecting to cell towers for time sync. So airplane mode is a great privacy tool regardless of whether there's a SIM in your phone. And we'll dive further into this in an upcoming video in this series. Now let's look at DNS settings on your Graphene OS device. DNS stands for Domain Name System, and it's how your device translates human readable URLs into IP addresses that your device can understand. It can be a big privacy leak because by default, your cell provider probably handles these DNS requests for you. So they see which websites you visit and they're also notorious for selling your private data. There are different ways you can address this. You can install a VPN app on the device and your VPN provider will usually handle your DNS requests for you, as well as encrypt the traffic out of your device so that it can't be seen by your cell provider. Or you can change your DNS settings via the private DNS feature so that your cell provider is no longer in charge of those requests. Be aware though that you will have issues if you do both these things. Private DNS will override the DNS settings of the VPN app. Basically, enabling private DNS makes your phone stop using network DNS and replaces it with the private DNS server. When you use a VPN, the VPN DNS is your network DNS for everything other than connectivity checks. And so enabling private DNS and using a VPN can actually make you stand out more because someone using Quad9 DNS on a Molvad IP address, for example, will be somewhat unique. This makes you more trackable. Just using a VPN is generally a good choice, and Mulvad and ProtonVPN are both highly regarded options. You would just download the VPN app to set it up. If you do decide to switch out your DNS provider instead, Quad9 is a good choice for private DNS. They're a non-profit DNS resolver that blocks malicious sites, and they also help prevent your ISP or cell provider from spying on your online activities by encrypting the requests as it travels from your device to Quad9. To set this up, go to Settings, Network and Internet, scroll down and select Private DNS. Then select Private DNS Provider Hostname and enter dns.quad9.net. Now let's look at how to set default apps. If you go to Settings, Apps and select Default Apps, you can set your favorite default apps there. For example, you might set Brave as your default browser if that's an app that you like. Vanadium is also a great choice for browser, which is already your default. Then there's notifications. Under Settings and Notifications, you can choose whether you want notifications to appear on the lock screen. I select Don't Show Any Notifications because I don't want people to be able to get any data about my phone activities when it's locked. Now under Settings, Display and Lock Screen, you can disable Wake Screen for notifications. This prevents unintended exposure of notifications by keeping the screen dark instead of turning on each time you get a notification. Screen timeouts is another setting that you might want to tweak. Under settings and display, you'll see screen timeout. It's a good practice to keep your phone locked as soon as you have a period of inactivity. We recommend selecting one minute, and this also aids in battery conservation. If you have a privacy screen on your device, you might want to consider tweaking some of the settings for touch screen. Under settings and display, there's an option to increase touch sensitivity. This can be a helpful setting to turn on to ensure accurate touch response despite the additional privacy screen layer. Now let's look at auto reboot. Rebooting your device is a valuable defense against attackers with physical access to the device, as it puts your device into a state known as at rest, where encryption keys and memory are cleared out. While data in storage is always encrypted, as soon as you log in to a profile after it's rebooted, i.e. put in your PIN and unlock the device, the encryption key becomes available to the device. So as long as the phone has been logged into at least once since the last time it was 
rebooted, if a malicious actor has the device in their possession, they could get access to your data even if the screen is locked. On Graphene, you can set your phone to auto-reboot if the device hasn't been unlocked within a specified period. This reboot will frequently take your device back to the initial state where no profiles are logged in. And so no one can get access to your data within profiles if they manage to get hold of your device. In this state, the Titan M2 chip will also prevent brute forcing of the device passcode. So your data will remain secure until you unlock the phone. By default, Graphene OS sets auto reboot to 72 hours, but we recommend that most people lower it to 12 hours or less. To do this, go to settings, security, auto reboot, then select 12 hours or less under auto reboot. Then there's pin layout. Go to settings, select security, and enable scramble pin input layout. Scrambling the pin input layout when entering the unlock code adds a layer of security against shoulder surfing because someone can't tell from the general movement of your fingers what your pin is. You can also choose to unlock your phone using a password instead of using a pin at all. Finally, there's customization. Under settings, privacy, and permission management, Manager, you have the ability to fine tune app permissions, choosing which apps are allowed to access contacts, location, microphone, etc. Go through each setting and choose which apps you want to have access to which services. Be careful not to touch permissions for any apps which are part of Graphene OS, as you may break things. Graphene OS is great because it allows for granular customization, so you can tailor your phone to fit your specific needs and priorities. Each setting that we've discussed is designed to boost privacy and security. But remember, these adjustments are optional, and right out of the box, Graphene already helps protect you in so many ways. For example, by default, your Graphene OS phone has enabled something called Per Connection Randomized Mac. Your MAC address is a unique identifier that helps data packets be routed to correct devices within a local network, but it's often used for tracking, both by certain apps on your device, but also by stores and airports who use it to track your physical movements. By default, your Graphene OS phone assigns a unique and randomized MAC address each time it connects to a different Wi-Fi network. This still allows tracking within a single internet session, but it prevents anyone from tying your internet sessions together. So the next time you're in a store that tracks MAC addresses, they won't be able to tie it to your last visit because you'll have a new MAC address. Another setting that Graphene turns on by default is using a Graphene OS proxy for attestation key provisioning. This is a super complicated topic, and we're going to release a separate addendum video explaining what this is. But basically, this has to do with a security feature that's used to verify the integrity and authenticity of a device's hardware and software to make sure that it hasn't been tampered with. And Graphene OS, by default, adds a proxy to this process for added privacy so that you don't have to give your IP address to Google. Another video that you might want to take a look at is our overview of private apps. For your next step on your graphene device, you might want to swap out some of your normal apps for more private alternatives. We go over our favorite options. And we also have a playlist of videos deep diving into all of our recommendations, like the best app stores, best maps, best keyboard apps, best video watching apps, best podcast apps, best messaging apps, etc. All from a privacy perspective. If you're privacy conscious and you've decided to give Graphene OS a go, well done. You are building a fortified digital environment that better aligns with your values. As you continue on your privacy journey, Graphene OS is sure to become one of your favorite tools in your toolbox. Phone privacy is important, and Graphene does a great job at helping you reclaim more control over your digital life. NBTV is funded by community donations, so people like you who might have gotten value from watching this video. If you'd like to support what we do, please visit mbtv.media slash support. And also take a look at our book, Beginner's Introduction to Privacy, because this also supports our channel. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, because it really helps us be seen by more people and enables us to spread privacy awareness further. Thank you so much for watching through till the end, which also helps us in the algorithm. There are probably a lot of people watching this who already have Graphene on their device and they probably tinker with it and they probably know about all kinds of other settings that they love for privacy. So if we haven't mentioned your favorite settings, let us know in the comments. I would love to hear what else out there there is to explore so that I can share it with others.